Welcome to my world. on it to all my regulars welcome back to the channel we're gonna get the crock pot turned on to low and we're gonna simmer all day my canned spaghetti sauce which is really easy to do my grandmother taught me how to do it with the cans back in the 70s when I was little and I continue to do it today my mom also did this as well as my dad I also have frozen bell peppers in the freezer that we can add in and we have Italian sausage that's ground up and we're going to make a real easy Italian sausage style meatball and you can throw it in raw which is awesome because then I don't have to turn on the oven and the crock pot will cook it raw that's what it's made for head and start by opening up the cans I'm going to do the ones that pop from the top dump the entire can in if you have sauce stuck to the side, run some water in it so you get all that goodness out of the can. I have a new Walmart empties players list that's going to be started and that will include the Dollar Tree ones. And we use a lot of great value products and if you've never used them before, you'll have an idea of how good they are by our reviews. I'm going to add in the diced tomatoes, including its juices. add in one entire can of the paste. Walmart has this new larger size so I don't think I'm wasting paste by using two of the small cans. First thing we're going to do is add in the tomato basil, also a great value product. We used to buy the Prego or the Hunts, recently switched to great value. It's a great buy, a good price, and it's just the same as the name brands. If your husband's not around and the jar is stuck, just tap it onto your countertop and it will get unstuck. Sometimes you got to tap it a couple times, but it works every time. I'm going to rinse some water in this again so we get all the goodness out. It will not be watery. I'm going to use the entire can of paste. Also the great value. I'm going to get it open. And we're going to take out all that paste. I heard there's a little spatula for canned goods at your local Dollar Tree that's great for paste and peanut butter and stuff. Next time I'm there in the kitchen section, I'm going to see if I can pick it up and get one because I would really like one for these kinds of dinners that have food that stick to the cans really well or for the back to school lunches that will start again and it the 6th or 7th of September, depending on if my kid buys or not. We'll do the lunch videos once again, and they can be located in the shorts players list. Check out our players list of all we do here at Let Us Eat and binge watch them. In our description box, we have all the players lists and all the links to all our social sites including our Facebook page and Facebook group, which is the same name as the channel. Just going to stir that so all the paste is combined within the sauce. Then I'm going to grab my black pepper and garlic salt supreme from the Dollar Tree and I put in about two to three teaspoons. Stockpile this so I don't run out. It's awesome and it saves time by not having a couple different spices. You don't need too much because the sauce is very fragrant full with spices within it and it smells incredible. This is just an extra added boost and how my grandma did it. I'm going to keep the spice out because we're going to work on the meatballs now. Go ahead and cover the lid while we prep the sausage meatball. I'm going to crack open two eggs. A 
if you have a garden, you can go ahead and save them for your garden. Or you can wash them thoroughly to give to your blue jay. The females eat them in the wintertime, especially if they're nesting and if having little birds. I'm going to take your ground sausage and dump it right on into the bowl with the egg. My husband's not a fan of real onion. I'll shake out that teaspoon. Or you can use onion soup mix or the real onion. If you use a real onion, I use a quarter of a cup of diced onion. Not too much because it's in the sauce, about a teaspoon, nothing fancy. This is really good panko from the Dollar Tree. It works well on vegetables and beef as well as pork and chicken. I've made homemade chicken nuggets, made tuna milks with them, tuna burgers, black bean meatballs, uh, just a, very versatile. You're going to take your clean hands and scrunch it up well until it's well combined. I always hold on to one side of the bowl so it doesn't get away from you and fly off the counter. Wash my hands. We're going to roll them up and then dump them into the crock pot. With your clean hands, I do them about this thick. Just off to the side. No need to pre-cook. Crock pot does all the work for you and will keep your hands free throughout the day when you have a very busy schedule. We use our crock pot about four times a week most of the time and the air fryer two to three times a week in between alternating dishes. We turn our oven on more so in the winter time when it's colder out. I use my Dutch oven a lot too during the week when I'm making dinners for advanced meals by putting them into the freezer for later dates. This is how my grandmother made the meatballs. Making sure all of that pork is spoken for. And nothing's underneath. Anything left over will make a tiny meatball to put into the crock pot for my husband. Move the lid. I'll grab the bell peppers momentarily. Always reshape the meatballs that are made from sausage if needed. And replace the sausage to other meatballs if they don't look like they're about the same size. And they're going to soak in the hot tub here all day and it's going to become delicious. My children won't eat them, so my husband and I will split them. And if I have leftovers, they go to my neighbors, love my tomato sauce, and rave about it. That made nine sausage meatballs. Frozen bell peppers, because they're expensive unless otherwise on sale, are by TJ Farms from the Dollar Tree. We have a Dollar Tree Dinners and Dollar Tree Halls players list. That's well cook with me. Those are all the onions that are going to go into my sauce. Sometimes you get more onion than the bell peppers. These are awesome. I've been using them for years. I've seen restaurants go in and snag them. Make sure your crock pot's set to low and plugged in if you haven't. God knows I have done that in the past, cooking absolutely nothing with it unplugged and or not on at all or on keep warm. So I'm very, very diligent and I make sure everything's ready to go. And look how thick this sauce is. It's not even dripping off the spoon. Later today, we'll come back, throw together the pasta or spaghetti, whatever we have. Maybe some garlic bread and the air fryer especially and show you everything 
on the plate or in a bowl when it's done. Just grabbed a box of thin spaghetti from my pantry shelves. We buy a lot of great value products. We just started out a great value empties series, like the Dollar Tree empties ones. We're going to use this one and a half a box. Hours later, there's going to be a lot of steam coming out. And look at that. That looks absolutely wonderful. I'm going to grab my wooden spoon. I'm going to stir it up. Those were onions that were frozen that's been simmering. The sausage style meatballs came out absolutely perfect. It's nice and thick. I'm going to go ahead and turn this all the way off. We're going to let it cool down. I'll I'm going to grab my pot from my upper shelf. I'm going to keep my stock pot up at the top here. Recently, I've revamped it once again. I have the bins in this one because the bins are out of sight. The bins, I have some on that pantry shelf because it has to be out in the open. I got rid of the homemade ones because it looked more cluttery that way. The stock pot in and to the sink. I'm going to fill it up three quarters of the way full. Am I doing this or you? Fill it up to three quarters of the way full. You get your burner turned on. And it's set to high. Now we're going to put a little bit of salt and a little bit of oil in. Let that fill up to about there. When it starts to come to a raging boil, a couple of dashes of salt. When it's boiling and the pastas in there are the spaghetti, we will add the oil. That salt won't stick. If you don't have any oil, just use butter. I always use butter before cooking oil became a real thing in your kitchen. My oil over here. Again, we picked out the great value thin spaghetti. Great value spaghetti night and crock pot spaghetti sauce. Drizzle in the oil. Now that the water's at a full boil, I'm just going to leave the pasta standing up because they're going to naturally fall in to the stock pot rather than breaking them. I'm go ahead and slowly push them in. Naturally, let them fall. I'm going to cook it for 8 minutes. The box will tell you how long. In the meantime, I'm going to grab the colander so they're ready to go into it. Stir occasionally so you don't stick in a glump. Pasta. Eight minutes is all it took. We didn't overboil because I keep the spoon over the pot. Let it rest on it while it cooks. Little trick I've been doing my whole life. Get the tongs out of the way. I'm gonna let that chill naturally. I'm going to grab some or spaghetti. I just call it whatever. It is hot, so please watch yourself. Wait until you can see how beautiful this sauce came out. Just the same as it would a Prego or a Hunt's. Go ahead. I'm going to have one sausage meat ball. I like my pasta thick where it sits on the spaghetti, not run around it like a moat. And that is what it looks like. 
dinner is done.